Ready? One, two, three, start. Hello, I'm Bruce Shaney. Today in my science class, we're going to try and measure the speed of sound. After coming up with a basic procedure, we decided to do it as a class project rather than individually. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a noise, which is going to travel from me to the building and back. And essentially, what we're measuring is the echo. Now, for our calculations, we're going to start with the equation that says speed is equal to distance divided by the time. Now, our distance is from here to the building. Wait, should I video tape it? Sure. Should I slow my load? Nah, did you get to slow my with a tank class? We have a 100-foot tape measure. We'll measure it in feet, and we can convert that to meters. After measuring, we multiply the distance by 2. Now, measuring a ton is going to be much harder. This is going to be so quick, it's going to be hard to get an accurate reading. <laughs> Hello! We found that shouting didn't work so well. To time it, I'm going to slap these two boards together, and we would start the clock when I slap them, and then stop it when we hear the echo. The problem is it's just too quick. So rather than just trying to time one, what I want to try and do is get a rhythm going, and then we'd time a series of ten clicks rather than just one. Ready? One, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, stop. In each trial, we would have 10 people timing and then use the average number. We'll take a look at results from three different classes. Now, another method for finding the time is to record it. And if you play it back four times slower or 10 times slower, it's much easier to time for a slower speed. Point four seven. In this case, we'd have to divide that number by 4 and then use it in the results. Our next step would be to plug those numbers into the equation and see what we get. Now, when we look at our calculated results, I want to compare it to the actual results that's been adjusted according to temperature. So when we go outside, we'll also have to take the temperature of the air at the same time. The temperature did increase from one class to the other, just enough to change the actual measurement. So here are the best three trials for the day, the time that I took off the video, all compared to the actual speed of sound. Now looking at our results, I think they're fairly reasonable considering the equipment we used. Wooden blocks, stopwatch, and a calculator. With these simple tools and some of our best measurements, we were able to get within 2% of the actual speed of sound. Not all of our measurements were that good, but we were consistently less than 4% off from the actual measurement. Now we also came up with a list of possible errors. Human error in using the stopwatch. All these people were timing the same event, but we have all these different numbers. There may have been some error in my clapping. It does take some practice to get that rhythm going of clapping on the echo. We had no way of knowing whether the air temperature stayed consistent across the whole distance. A change of a few degrees would make a difference. And finally, our distance may have been off. We were standing on a hill, and that's a little bit harder than measuring on level ground. But even with these possible errors, after making a few changes, I think we were all pleased with the results that we found. All right, here we go again. As always, I'd like to thank you for stopping in and come back and see me again. Okay, bye.